Hi there, this is Robin Andrews from Comp Academy, where we teach you about programming and computer science in a fun and accessible way. So today, we're going to talk about discrete mathematics, which might sound a little bit scary, um, and the difference between a discrete and a continuous quantity, and why that is relevant to computer science. Okay, so the context for this is a discussion I've been involved in. Uh, sorry, I just found my pen. A discussion we've been involved in about um, pixels and screen resolution. Okay, so the way you find the, uh, the resolution of an image is you multiply the number of pixels horizontally by the number of pixels vertically. Okay? Here's the formula in my almost illegible handwriting. Width in pixels multiplied by height in pixels, right? And then if you do that calculation, let's say for simple numbers, you have something like, I don't know, 200 by 300. Let's say it's like a portrait, little portrait shaped rectangle. Okay, that's gonna give you, I believe, uh, six plus all the zeros, Okay, it's going to give you 60,000 pixels, okay? Now, what's the unit of measurement of those pixels? Well, it's pixels, okay? It's number of pixels. And I think there's some confusion that arises here. It's because normally, um, when we think about like multiplying width and height, we're thinking about actual distances, so things like centimeters, millimeters, whatever, yeah? And when you multiply those, let's say centimeters, for example, if you did a, a two by three centimeter square, uh, sorry, rectangle, and you multiplied the, you know, the base by the height, which is the formula, that would give you six square centimeters, okay? So your unit would be cm squared. Okay, just clear everything else and put cm squared in the middle of my board. CM squared. So what does CM squared means? Well, it means basically it means square centimeters. Okay, so that means squares whose side is one centimeter and because they're squared the base is the same as the height. So it's still a number. So CM squared is actually a number of these little squares that will cover your rectangle. Okay, now what's interesting with maths is that these indices here there's a real elegance to the system such that you can have things like negative indices. So you might have s to the minus one, that would mean per second, okay? And you can have uh, m to the minus two, like for example, newtons per square meter, okay? Newtons per square meter, the way we interpret negative indices is like per unit, yeah? Um, so newtons per meter squared. And with these indices, you can actually do some really interesting stuff. So you can do like multiplying and dividing and having like fractions and stuff to come out with meaningful um, units of measurement when you're dealing with what we call continuous quantities. So this is where I need to talk about the difference between discrete and continuous quantities, right? So let's say on my board, I'd have some blobs, right? I've got one, two, three, four. I have five blobs, right? So what's my unit of measurement? My unit of measurement is blobs, okay? Number of blobs. I have five, five blobs. My unit of measurement is number of blobs notice that word number in front of that unit of measurement because blobs are a countable thing okay they're a, a unit a, a quantity which can be counted okay so let's just go into that a little bit more if i do a line on my board okay let's imagine this is a straight line and i have a tool for measuring it okay i have a ruler okay so i take a measurement da -da -da. Uh, starting at zero there Assuming it's roughly straight, that's like 21.5 centimeters, okay, my line. So that's a measurement, okay? Now, it's different. I'm not counting centimeters, I'm measuring centimeters. And one thing about continuous quantities, so when we measure something, we're talking about a continuous quantity, okay? It means there's kind of infinite gradations that it, of, of length that it could be in between two points. And the thing about continuous quantities is when you measure them, you're always making an approximation, okay? so. So for example, you measure this and you were pretty confident it was 21.5 centimeters, but then you realize your eyesight wasn't very good. I have actually got my glasses here. If I had my glasses here, I'd put them on and I'd probably get a more accurate measurement. Maybe it'd be 21.4, not 21.5, yeah? And then someone else says, aha, but you know, I've got like a camera with a zoom lens, I'm gonna zoom in, no, it's actually 24.2, yeah? And et cetera, you can keep going to a more um, fine degree of, um, what's the word, granularity in terms of your measurement. Okay, so any measurement you give would always be only to a, a certain level of accuracy. But the point is, don't, don't freak out about those units, okay? So you've got width in pixels, let's do this again. Width 
width in pixels times height in pixels. Okay, your resolution, and, and this builds back into um, file size, so approximating file sizes for different sized images um, when we're doing um, bitmap representations. Um, <clears throat> The unit is just going to be a number of pixels. Don't get freaked out about are they pixel squared? <laughs> okay, they're not. There's no such thing as a px squared. Oh, doesn't exist. Okay, because that's a misconception. We're talking about counting. We're counting the number of pixels across the screen. We're counting the number down, number down the screen. Okay, and then to find out the total number, we multiply that number by that number, and we get a value of pixels, not of pixels squared. There might be square pixels, okay, that depends on the shape, they might be round, okay, but there's a difference. <laughs> okay, so don't confuse what mathemat don't confuse mathematical notation, which is an incredibly powerful tool, and you can do all sorts of clever things, you know, like adding indices, multiplying, dividing indices, whatever, to come up with all sorts of, you know, complex quantities. But that's not what we're doing here. Okay, so one more example I want to talk about is how this plays out in terms of arithmetic on a computer, okay? Now, some of you may know that when you do arithmetic with floating point or decimal numbers um, on a computer, you sometimes get unexpected results. So one example would be um, 1.2 minus 1.0, right? We would expect a nice round number for that. We would expect 0.2 to be the answer, but it's in fact 0.19, and then this goes on for whatever level of precision your computer has. Now, why would that be? And the reason is because if you think about it, and the reason that when you study computer science at university, you generally also study discrete mathematics specifically. If you think about it, the way we represent numbers inside a computer is using a finite number of bits, okay, in binary. Okay, so you might be using 32-bit integers, okay? That means you've got 32 bits only to represent a number, okay? So the first consequence of that is you can't have like infinite like if you like a third for example is you know 0.3 recurring you can't actually completely store that and you have to find ways around that because it's an infinite expansion you have the, the 0.3 recurring um but another consequence is that you get these strange little errors okay there's ways ways of solving it like you can import packages to specifically deal with um you know money or you know high high precision decimal arithmetic or whatever um but on a basic level this goes on, all right? So just be aware of that. <clears throat> so that's it really, it's a bit of a, a kind of waffle really, but I just think that concept of discrete versus continuous is really important to keep in mind. Again, okay? computers, generally speaking, are dealing with discrete, countable data. Okay, folks, so there it is. I hope that was useful to you. Discrete versus continuous quantities and just some kind of context of how that applies to your computer science studies. Um, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Um, I've also got a website, compucademy.co.uk. It's currently being um, rejigged <laughs> re a bit, um, but you will find some good stuff on there, um, specifically for GCSE and A-level computer science and also anything to do with Python programming. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.